put things together. And, and the men go to the market, and it's good. <laughs> go to the market. Agbogloshi. <laughs> Yeah, not just a crown or go to Agbo Bloshi. There are times that I'll wake him up 3 a.m. and he's with me going to Agbo Bloshi, like he yeah, said. Yeah. So, so learn to do things together. It spices things up. Amen. 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 So, Pastor Jeff, I have um, another question here. It's actually two. It says, please, I am in a relationship with a man who is a good Christian, mm -hmm. but I have no love for him, but don't know how, what to do. What should a Christian courtship look like? It was an awesome time of prayer in the presence of God. Indeed, today I, I, I was hoping to be able to share some things with you from the word of God. But as God himself will have it, I believe that we needed to push some prayer in the arena of, in the arena of people's marriages so that we could break away some things for people to marry. Because the frustrations in that area is just too much. Amen. Well, today I am privileged to have here with me, to be able to do the second session, my own wife of 16 years. Amen. Amen. And just in case you want the clarification, today people have wives, but they are not women. My wife is a woman. Sure. I say my wife is a, a woman. Yes, I married a woman. Some people are now married men and calling them wives. My wife is a woman. So help me to welcome the one and only Mrs. Juliana Quayson on set with me today. Mommy, you are very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's get straight into the questions and I will believe God for the answers. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> thank you once again. Um, Pastor Jeff, the first question we have here says, good afternoon, Pastor. My question is, do you recommend staying with a spouse that previously cheated? How do you build trust again? Do you recommend staying with a spouse that previously cheated? How do you build trust again? Do you recommend staying with a spouse that previously cheated? Now, I'll need some more clarification. So whoever sent that question. Um, I want to understand, if you say spouse, it means that you have fully married a person. It's a proper marriage. Eh? And then in the midst of the marriage, the person has cheated. Am I correct? And you are asking whether you should continue to stay in a marriage with that person. Amen. Amen. Well, my answer to you is very simple. Marriage is for two people, for two forgivers. Say two forgivers. Two oh, I didn't hear. Say two forgivers. Two forgivers. Yeah. If you are not married, it's a different story. If you are not married and you are about to get married and the person has cheated on you over and over again, then my counsel for you will be different. But if you are already married and in the midst of the marriage you have discovered that the person has been unfaithful to you, either as a husband or as your wife, I would enjoin you that first and foremost, you forgive the person. Amen. Amen. Because I'm telling you, listen, it may look like moving out of the marriage is an easy option, but it's not as easy as you think. It's not as easy as you think. I believe that the way God wants us to live our lives is that we must learn to be able to accommodate each other, forgive each other, and grow together. Amen. Because there's no doubt the issue of trust has been affected by what has happened but i also want you to understand that you can build that trust again i know people who have made mistakes in their earlier parts of their lives but by the grace of god the latter part of, of their marriages has been glorious it's been just beautiful by the grace of god so yes trust can be built again it will take some time but it can be built again so far as the person involved is willing to amend his ways or her ways and they are willing to commit to do it God's way, then I'll tell you, stay with the person. Don't let him go. Amen. 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 So what I'll add is the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. Uh, Pastor Jeb has said it all. I believe that once there is love in the relationship, you can rebuild that trust again, and God will help us. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jeb, I have another question. It says that, Please, my question is, if in a courtship with someone in a long distance relationship, I guess, 
how would you know he is the real man or a faithful man? If you are in a courtship with in a long distance courtship. Yes, I'm trying to add some to it to make it meaningful. If how will you know if the person is a faithful man? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or a real man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Virtual man. <laughs> well, <laughs> so you see, for every kind of relationship you get into, it comes with its own set of dynamics. When you do a long distance marriage, one of the dynamics that will always come into place is the person being faithful to me. Because you are not there with the person. The, you, the person too is not here with you. Are you understanding me? So it can be easy to cheat if you're in a long-distance relationship. But that is why I tell people all the time, I was in a long-distance relationship with my beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And when the relationship for, let's say, roughly about two years, and then we got married. If both of you understand that first and foremost, you are a Christian first, before you are a boyfriend or a girlfriend or before you are a husband or a wife and so your your allegiance is to god when you are faithful you are faithful to god first it's not that you are faithful to your girlfriend no that girlfriend you are even being faithful to she can cheat on you and go somewhere else mm -hmm. but you are being faithful to god because you know that this is god's expectation for my life and I want to do it right. I want to honor God in this thing that I'm doing. So what I will advise you to, to do is that one, if you are doing it right on one side of the world and the person you are in a relationship with on the other hand is not doing it right. That is why prayer is important. Pray for the person. Cover the person. Listen, if you are in a relationship with somebody, whether the person is close or far, you must always cover the person with prayer. Because anytime they get out of their house, anytime they go into another environment, Satan will show them people, show them opportunities, will bring them temptations that will, are available for cheating and are available for infidelity and unfaithfulness. It is all around us. Even those of us who are married today, even today, 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 the enemy still finds opportunities to get us to cheat on our wives and on our husbands in one way or the other. It's happening in offices, it's happening in homes, it's happening in churches all over. So first and foremost, unfortunately in this generation, we have not learned to cover our spouses with prayer. I told you that when I got into a relationship with my wife, and she had to travel to London, everybody I knew advised me that I should forget the girl is not coming back to me. But it was prayer. Every day we're praying together, believing God together, believing God together. And you see, if you would just remain faithful to God, that faithfulness would translate into the relationship or into the marriage that you are getting yourself into. On the other hand, if you are a very faithful person who is also very prayerful, if the other person is messing up, God will also reveal it to you. Are you understanding me? I say God will also do what? He will reveal it to you. And I tell people, for those of you who have not who may not be aware, if you go to our page on Facebook, we did a whole teaching on dreams. Amen. We did a whole teaching, I think it was about 10 different messages on dreams and interpretation of dreams and things like that. And one of the things that we learned when we when we're doing that is that dreams are one of, one of the ways that God uses to speak to us. So when God is trying to communicate something to us, and we are not able to hear it, then God will give us a dream so that we can be able to understand the message or be able to get what he's trying to tell us. But there is something that we learned from the dream of Pharaoh. When Joseph was interpreting the dream of Pharaoh, he said something. He said, for the fact that the dream was doubled to you, Pharaoh, is because the thing is sure to happen. Anytime you have a dream and that dream comes more than once, then you know that that dream steps have been taken to bring it to pass so for example if you dream that your husband is fornicating or your partner is fornicating is the first time you had a dream pray about it no doubt by the time you are dreaming that same dream second or third time it means that if the enemy is not contemplating or making him fornicate but somebody has been assigned to make sure that he actually does a fornication 
And when you have a dream more than once, you need to pray more seriously. Because you are not there. The person is not there. You are in a place, they are in a different place. And if you don't cover them with prayer, you will end up marrying somebody who himself is very unfaithful. And you will suffer a great deal for it. Amen. 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 Well, um, what I will add is because I have been in that bit before, I think I can advise a little. What I did was that I was always in prayer. People were advising me, how can you be so sure? This guy is in Ghana. How can you be so sure of what he's doing? But um, we remained faithful to each other because I prayed for him and then I trusted him into the hands of God. I was always on the phone with him talking and God did it. So once you are, you are praying for him, and then once you to remain faithful wherever you are, I believe that God will keep the two of you. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Jeff, someone is saying, how should a, a Christian courtship look like? How should a Christian relationship look like? How should it be? How should it look like? I, I don't know what it means by look like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it means by look like. But you see, if you are a Christian, like I said yesterday, you don't want to marry American marriage. You don't want to marry Canadian marriage. You don't want to marry London marriage. You want to marry according to the Bible. I have noticed that there are many people who hold on to the word of God when they are in Ghana. When they travel, they tell themselves this environment supports this so I can also do some. And that is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. Because the God of Accra is the same God of New York and is the same God in London. His precepts will not change. His standards will not change just because your location has changed. So, for example, one of the things that is not common in this part of our world is people who are in a relationship and they are living together. It's not very common in this part of our world. But if you go to Europe and America and things like that, it's a very common phenomenon there. Very, very common. And so people live here and go there and they tell themselves that we can do this here. But I just want you to understand that the standards of God, they don't change. Amen. They don't change and they won't change because you've gone into a new geographical environment. It will not change. So if you want to be in a Christian courtship, the word of God must be the final authority in that relationship. You know the boundaries that the word of God has set for you in a relationship. Don't cross the boundaries. Don't cross the boundaries. People say we are dating. And what they actually mean is that we are having sex. Having sex is not called dating. It's called fornication. Amen. Stop all these new names. People are trying to reclassify things. No. There is a name for it in the Bible. The Bible calls it fornication. And it is a sin. And the fact that the person has said he is going to marry you, it does not mean that he can sleep with you. That is God's standard. That is God's standard, and it won't change in London, it won't change in, in, in Toronto, it won't change in New York, and it will not change in Ghana. That is God's standard. So if you want to be in a relationship, your first thing you must do is to honor God in that relationship. Honor God in that relationship. Uphold the word of God in that relationship. Let the word of God be the final authority in that relationship. And I'm telling you, you will not regret it. Hallelujah. Amen. You will not regret it. Amen. Pastor Deb, we have another question here. Mm -hmm. It says, please, what do you do when a man you have been with for 24 years mm -hmm. tells you he doesn't love you anymore and is involved with another woman at his workplace? What do you do? What do you do when a man you've involved with for 24 years tells you he doesn't love you anymore and is involved with another woman at his workplace? Well, hmm. Hmm. you see, nothing just happens. I repeat, nothing just happens. happens. Within the 24 years, I remember last three years, we did the couple's retreat and the team was growing together and not apart. Yeah. Unfortunately, when people get married eh, and they get into the marriage covenant, at a point, instead of them continuing to grow together, they are growing, but they are not growing together. They are growing apart. Mm. And if we allow these kind of things to happen for a long time, 
one day you get to a point where you realize that the person you are living with is a total stranger to you. Because the person is no longer part of anything you are doing. There are many people that because of growing apart, there is nothing they do together with their wives. Nothing. They have stopped bathing together. Amen. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Amen. Yeah. How, how can you miss such a, a major breakthrough in your life? <laughs> bathing together with your wife is one of the major breakthroughs in life. Wow. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this is only for married people. Okay. <laughs> so I've been married for 16 years. I still bath with my wife. And it's one of the most exciting times, you know, of our lives. But you see, when you get to the point where you are used to living your life without your wife, or living your life without your husband, by all means, that your husband and that your wife, they are relational beings. So anybody who will give them attention, they will start relating to the person. And too many times, um, I know that by the time it gets to this point, the disconnect has happened for a very long time. A long time. So that's why I tell people, listen, don't bring your marriage to a deadlock. Where you tell yourself, say nothing. Mr. Say nothing. Onion your permit. This is how he is. This me to this how I am. Let him do what he wants to do. Me too, I'll do what I want to do. The moment you come to that position in marriage and know that you have just opened the door of divorce. Because the man will now start doing his things without you. You too, you start doing your things without the man. At a point you realize that I don't need you for anything. You too, you don't need me for anything. So why, why are we why are we staying together and say we are married? We don't have anything in common. So let's go our, our different ways. But to this woman, this is what I'll say. Number one, 24 years is a long time of investment. Yeah. I don't know what has happened that has made the man decide to go away. But I am telling you that first and foremost, commit it to prayer, to serious prayer. Because many of the times when people are trying to take a man or a woman out of a marriage, they don't just do it with their eyes. Yeah. Many of the time they will go for some kind of powers and things to enable them to do that. Especially when they realize that the man loves their wife or loves their husband very well. They will employ all manner of powers. They will give him food and the food, they put something in the food that will make his mind change towards, towards, uh, towards you to them. And all manner of things. So people employ all of these things. So my first point is that engage in prayer. Commit yourself to prayer. And word this in prayer. Number two, try your very best, if you can, to start doing things together with your husband. Show interest in your husband. Because you see, if after 24 years, he just comes and says, I'm no longer interested. It didn't just happen overnight. It's been years of neglect, years of no attention, years of not working together, and it will culminate into that 24 years. And then you say, I don't, I don't have anything to do with you. So for all of us who are in marriage, please take your time and continue to build things. There are things that bring couples together. Eh? There are things that 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 yes spices are. For example, when my wife is when my wife is uh, is cutting my nails, it's one of the things that I just love. She's just cutting my nails, even though she's not very good, <laughs> and she can murder murder the nails. <laughs> Hallelujah! It is more of murder than cutting. But just for the fact that my leg will be on her lap, my hands will be on her, and then I just love that experience. And it is an experience that helps to bind us together. Are you understanding me? Yeah. So have activities that bind you together. Bind you together. When my wife is going to work, sometimes I go with her. When she's working in the kitchen, I'm standing with her. We are trying to do everything together. Don't get used to doing things on your own. When you persist in doing that for a long time, one day you will discover that the one you are staying with is a total stranger to you. And then they will all want to get out of that marriage. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I remember one advice my husband gave me. Because I, I married to someone who is all yes for everybody. I mean, there is always somebody around. Somebody wanting to talk to him. Somebody. I mean, there is always somebody around. But this is what he told me. Make your husband your friend. 
make your husband your friend. So he has always been my pal, my best friend. We love, we do everything together. Mm -hmm. I pull him to the market when I'm going. I mean, we try to do things together. Uh, the men, go to the market. Uh, it's good. <laughs> go to the market. Agbogloshi. <laughs> Yeah, not just a crumb, or go to Agbogloshi. There are times that I'll wake him up 3 a.m. and he's with me going to Agbogloshi, like he yeah, said. Yeah. So, so learn to do things together. It spices things up. Amen. 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 So, Pastor Jeff, I have um, another question here. It's actually two. It says, please, I am in a relationship with a man who is a good Christian, mm -hmm. but I have no love for him, but don't know how, what to do. What should a Christian courtship look like? I am in a relationship with a man who is a good Christian, but I have no love for him, but don't know what to do. What should a Christian courtship look like? Amen. Amen. If you are in a relationship with a man, by your own admission, he's a good Christian. Mm -hmm. He's a good man. What you mean by love for him is that erotic feeling that people have for people. It is that amalgamation of emotions and, uh, and uh, what do you call it? Emotions and enzymes that stir up inside you when you see somebody. That is what many of us, we call love. It's not love at all. Amen. I say it is not what? Love. It's not love at all. Every human being has got it. It just helps to show you that you are attracted to somebody. But it, it, that is not love at all. At all. Amen. Amen. Love is commitment. Love is making a decision every day that I'm going to seek your greatest good and I'm going to seek your highest welfare. That is love. So in the book of, is it First Peter or Second Peter? Let me just consult my Bible. Bible tells us that love can be taught. Tell somebody love can be taught. Oh, I didn't hear you say love can be taught. Love can be taught. So, Peter says that teach them to love their husbands. Amen. Mm -hmm. Teach them to do what? Love their husbands. To love their husbands. Amen. Amen. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Titus chapter 2, verse 4. It says, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Love can be taught. Amen. Amen. So love is not that combination of chemicals that explode in your ears and explode in your heart and you feel Z That is not love. That is just to help you to know that, okay, your body reacts a certain way towards this person. It is a way of letting you know that you are attracted to somebody. But that is not love at all. So what you say you don't have for him, in fact, you don't need it for him. Are you there? What you said you don't have for him, I said you don't what? Mm. You don't need it for him. That you. Listen, anybody who has been married for even six months, ask them whether they still have that feeling. That butterflies in your stomach. When I see the person, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. By the time you marry, I give you maximum one month, two months, it will disappear. It will disappear. Now you see the person, you don't feel any The year is gone. The period of the year has passed. It is a period of commitment. This is now when the true love is demonstrated. Are you understanding me? I said true love is what? Demonstrated. It's demonstrated by seeking the greatest good and the highest welfare of the person that you are in the covenant with. So I'm telling you, sister, don't lose this good man. Because your own admission says that he is a good Christian. If he's a good Christian, you will be a beneficiary of his good Christianity. Which means he will be good to you. He will take good care of you. He will love you well. He will take... Ah, my sister, don't lose him. If I am you, I will, make, I will, I will tarry myself to you. No tarry. <laughs> tarry yourself to him. Amen. Tarry yourself to him. And I'm telling you, if you get married to him, you will not, you will not regret it. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jeff, I think yesterday, um, Prophet Kofi Ojo said something similar. He said that he cannot guarantee that he was in love when he was getting married. married. Yeah. Because it actually took him six, six weeks, weeks 
to marry um, yeah. his wife, mm. but they fell in love along the line. Mm. So I think that my sister, if the person is a good Christian, go for it. Amen. Amen. Mm. Um, Pastor Jeff, we have the last question here. I don't know if another one will come later, but this one says that my question is, I'm in a relationship with a gay, but my mom does not like him. Please, what you should I do? You are in a relationship with a... A guy that my mom does not like him. Mm -hmm. Please, what should I do now? Well, since you've not given us the reasons why your mom does not like him, it's difficult for me to advise you on this matter. Amen. Amen. But um, one... There are some reasons that sometimes people may have for not liking somebody. Some of those reasons may be genuine. Some of those reasons too, scripturally, they don't hold water. Amen. So the first thing I'll say is this. <clears throat> if your mother is a serious Christian and her reasons for not liking the, the guy, they are not based on flimsy excuses like he doesn't drive a good car, he doesn't... Uh, dress in a wearing coat all of those kind of things people look on the outward if your mother is not a cicadicious and cicapacious mother who is just looking for uh, a bendada for you eh, and is using those things to sack people but she's a spiritual woman eh, who is concerned about the content of people's hearts and their character and she's raising objections to this guy listen to your mother because i'm telling you there are things your your fathers and your mothers can see lying down that even if you stand on a mountain you cannot see experience cannot be bought at malcolm i said experience you don't buy it at where Melcom. at malcolm or akramo so there are people you may be going out with you may be in a relationship with but your mother can look at the person once look at the person twice and by her discernment she can tell you that this guy no Miraba, a branch on you who could do baby ara. Amen. So long as it is not predicated on material things, then I'll tell you, listen to your mother. Amen. Amen. Listen to your mother. Sometimes it may even be that you will end up marrying the guy, but you may have to take some more time to evaluate the guy and pray through on the issues because there may be hidden issues about him that you don't know. And sometimes the, 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 the disapproval of your parents will push you to pray some more and some of these things will come up so that you can be able to deal with them before you finally get into the marriage covenant amen 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 sometimes let me just add this sometimes even your spiritual heads like your pastors eh, people who have got spiritual authority over you sometimes they may disagree with the choices that you make for marriage now the fact that the disagreement came from a pastor does not mean you should necessarily listen to the pastor. Are you understanding me? I was privileged to be part of a marriage that the pastor of the gentleman did not want the gentleman to marry the lady. It was not because the lady was not a good lady or was not a godly woman, but it was simply because the pastor had somebody in mind that he wanted to give to the guy. <laughs> so when the guy now came to introduce this girl to him, that this is the lady that I want to marry. The pastor said, no, don't marry her. You see, in, in, in cases like that, I would recommend that you speak to another pastor or another person who is objective in the, uh, in the assessment of the person so that they can now give you the, the, let me say, the approval that you need to move ahead. And when this thing happened, the lady came to see me, said, Pastor Jeff, the gentleman I'm going to marry to, our pastor says you shouldn't marry me. What should I do? She came to me and we discussed it. And we realized that the reason for the disagreement was simply because the pastor had some niece be of his that he wanted to give the niece to the guy to marry. So we didn't listen to the counsel of selfish pastors. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, you only listen to the counsel of a spiritual person. But you don't listen to the counsel of a carnal person who is trying to use his carnality to destroy your life. Are you understanding me? So even if it's coming from a pastor or someone who is in spiritual authority over you, you need to analyze it to be sure that is it coming out of 
their objectiveness as a man of God or it is coming out of their biases and prejudices because of some carnality and material things that they are looking at. These are very important so that you can actually come to a conclusion and move ahead or otherwise. So this will be my counsel to you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Daddy, what do I do when I'm seeking the greatest good of my partner and she doesn't appreciate and sabotages my efforts because it makes it extremely difficult? Well, nobody said love is easy. There is no way in the Bible which says that love is easy. Love has never been easy. Jesus Christ, who showed us love, he had to die for it. And that is the, com the, the commandment God gives to every man. He says, husbands, love your wives. Not as your father loved your mother. Not as, a, a, what do you call it, Romeo loved Juliet. He says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And gave himself up for it. So in every relationship, there's, an, there's a degree of sacrifice that will be required from you. Now listen to this. How did Christ love the church? Too many of us say, listen, when we are looking at the, the marriage covenant, one of the things we say is that if the guy changes, uh, if the woman changes, me to her change. If she does this, well, me to her love her. If she submits, me to her love her. But that is not how Christ loved us. Bible says that God commended his love towards us in that whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the love of Christ. So the person may not deserve it. The person may not show appreciation for it. But your duty is to love the person. Love the person to the very end. Because one day when you meet God, he will ask you, did you love this lady as I love the church and gave myself up for her? Did you love her like that? Or you loved her until you were offended? So I want to encourage you, if you have made a choice to, to, to love that woman, go ahead and love her to the very end. And listen, there is no door that love cannot unlock. That woman who does not appreciate your love today, keep loving her. Keep loving her. I'm telling you, keep doing it. It will love. It will break every barrier. It will break every barrier. It won't be long that woman will start loving you back. Amen. Amen. Because women are incubators. As you keep sowing the seed, keep sowing the seed. At a point in time, they just have to return it. It will happen. Are you understanding me? Yeah. It will happen. So don't stop loving your wife. Don't stop today. Don't stop tomorrow. Don't stop next week. Don't stop next year. Love your wife till tell. Til, til. Amen. Amen. Pass that exam. Pass the test that God has given you as a husband. And pass it with flying colors to the glory of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. And I think apart from loving him, continue to pray for him too. Mm -hmm. Amen. For her. Is a for woman. her. Okay. Mm. For her. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jeff, for this question, <laughs> Pastor, mm -hmm. please will one be in a relationship with a man whom she fit and gave him work to enable him gather money for marriage, but rather he collapses the business and he still wants her back? Please advise the lady whether to quit or to continue. Please read the question again. I'm trying to you gather the question, Pastor. Please, will one be in a relationship with a man whom she feeds and gave him work to enable gather money for the marriage? Pastor Jeff, let me, let me redo the question myself. I think what she is trying to say is that um, she was actually in a relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. She gave the money to the man mm -hmm. to do a business and then help raise money for the marriage. But this man did not handle the business well. The business has collapsed. Mm -hmm. And then I think from the way she uh, phrased the question, I mean, I think because of that, she actually went out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. But the guy wants her back. Mm -hmm. So she's asking for advice. Should he go back to him or she should quit? Because the business collapsed. Yes, because he squandered the money from the business. Well, the first thing I would want to say is this. Um, I really don't know the circumstances under which the business collapsed. If we knew the circumstances under which the business collapsed, we'll be able to advise you more. If you believe that, because you see, I'm telling you, um, 
there are many businesses that people have started and have collapsed, even though the people did their very best under the circumstances. Mm. Are you understanding me? Yeah. So the fact that a business has collapsed should not be a criteria for marrying somebody or not marrying the person. I hope you understand me. However, if it is your express opinion that the business collapsed because the person was just reckless with the money or the person was not careful, they were just careless and they just spent it by heart and just wasted it. Then that raises some cause of concern. Amen. Amen. And what I will tell you is that you will need to sit down with the person because getting into ma marriage, there are so many financial decisions that you have to take. If the person is not financially prudent, it will affect the relationship. And I'm telling you, take it from me, 90% of all fights in marriage, it comes from money. money. 90 or maybe 95% or even 98% of fights that are in marriages, it comes because of money, money-related issues. So when somebody is not financially prudent, it is a cause to worry. However, like I said, it is um, these things, some people, it may be that they just don't know. You know, especially the way we do business in Ghana. Oh, Madam, my, my, my friend, be say people, uh, Beshit is selling pa, Beshit. People are buying Beshit pa. So, me too, I want money to go to China and go and bring Beshit. Then they sit in a plane, go to China, go and bring Beshit, and they bring it. And then, eight months, they've not be able to sell, sell the Beshit. By the time they finish selling the Beshit, they cannot even realize the money. Because it's the same money they were chopping small, 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 small. So, the Beshit is finished. <laughs> and we can't find the money for it. It's simply because many people get into business and they don't really take time to do the necessary analysis and groundwork that is that that will help to guarantee the success of the business but um, you are not you are not marrying because you are you are looking for a business partner you are marrying because you are looking for a life companion if the person has not got knowledge in that area you can help to build the knowledge of that person in that area if it will mean that both of you will have to work together on some things when it comes to finances, work together on it. Yesterday I shared that myself and my wife, we have a joint account. But my wife is a signature to the joint account. I am not. If I want anything from that account, I go and ask my wife. And she will write me a check and I'll go and collect it. The reason is simple. In my capacity as a pastor, I get a lot of people who are asking me for favors. I need this. And everybody's favor is an emergency. Even though by the time you get into it, it's not an emergency. You understand me? And usually, if there is money that is just available to me, I'll usually put my hand inside and just help somebody because I don't want to see anybody suffering. But I've noticed that many of the emergencies people call emergencies, they are not emergencies. If you are not able to help them as and when they expected you to help them, nobody will die. Are you understanding me? So... I realized that my wife is a, a much better manager of money. So when it comes to our financial decisions, I make a signature of those things. So that before any money will go out, we know that both of us, we have thought through it carefully. Now there is something that we used to do and I want to recommend for somebody to do. We have something we call disposable income. Say disposable income. Disposable income. Money that we can use to help people. Uh, somebody is sick, he needs money, we take some and give to him. Somebody has uh, school fees issues, you take some and give. So every month we have some money we call disposable income that we set aside. And we tell ourselves this disposable income, if it gets finished, any time in the month it gets finished, it's finished. We are not doing any disposables until the next month. So assuming that the disposable income for let's say the month of September, gets finished on 21st September. And then you come to us and you say, oh, um, Pastor Jeff, I want you to help me. I need a new shoe. I will tell you, come on 1st October or 2nd October. It's as simple as that because the disposable income for September is finished. And this your shoe is not an emergency. If I don't buy the shoe, nobody will die. Nothing will happen. Are you understanding me? And sometimes even the things people claim it's an emergency, if they don't do it, something will go wrong. By the time you investigate it well, it's not an emergency. So if you don't set up disposable income before you realize you are even getting into your own capital and you are taking your capital to give to others, by the time you keep doing that for six months, you will not even have a capital to run the business for you to have money to be able to even give some to people.
Are you understanding me? And so there are certain boundaries you need to set on all of these things. So one, the guy collapsed the business, no problem. But if the reason for collapsing the business is not because he's innately lazy and he doesn't like working himself and he's reckless with money and things like that, I will tell you that it's not a basis for not wanting to go ahead with a marriage. Amen. Mm -hmm. If there are challenges businesses face, help him in that area. If that if it's challenging, now, listen, there are some people who are very good givers, but bad savers. So when it comes to money, they understand one part of money, the other side they don't understand. They know how to give, they don't know how to save. So they don't have any investments. All their investment is in heaven. Meanwhile, they are going to be on earth for another 60 years. How are they going to survive? So they need to get knowledge in that area. How to grow in their financial knowledge, build financial independence, so that they do not suffer unnecessarily whilst they are on planet Earth. Are you understanding me? Uh -huh. So help people to get that knowledge by all means, if you are in a position to help them. Because me, I remember when I got married to my wife. My wife bought me a book. Understanding the mind of a woman. Because she realized that I didn't understand how women are. I'm always praying, sha -da 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 -da, sha -da. and I think everything can be done by prayer. Everything cannot be done by prayer. She bought the book, said, go and read it. It will help you. <laughs> and I went to read the book. And when I read the book, it helped me. Now I understand women better. And I'm able to relate to them better. And at the end of the day, all of us have benefited. Maybe you have to take him for a financial liter literacy class. Maybe you have to take him for a small business seminar somewhere. That will help him to be able to build up his capacity in that area. Because at the end of the day, a year, it works for both of you. Amen. 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 Pastor Jeff, he says, Pastor, please, can I marry my friend's ex-girlfriend? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> can you marry your... Can I marry my friend's ex-girlfriend? Hmm. Well, there's really no, no, no rule that says you cannot marry your friend's ex-girlfriend. You understand me? Except that it is, it is it's a little some way. You understand me? <laughs> Biblically, there is nothing that stops you from marrying that person. Are you understanding me? He was, so it was Ikike's girlfriend. Yes. And now and Ikike has left the girl. And Daniel, and Daniel to wants to marry the girl. Exactly. <laughs> so like i said um there's really no no i mean there is no there is no um instruction in the scriptures that stops you from being able to do that but i just think that in the spirit of brotherhood and um, social cohesion it may not be the best way to go that is my first point, especially if the breakup between the two of them is very fresh. Amen. Amen. But assuming that Ikike has dated the person and they've broken up three years ago and Daniel now wants to marry the person, I don't see anything that stops Daniel from marrying the person. Amen. The fact that the person was no good for Ikike does not mean the person will, no good, will not be good for Daniel. Daniel says he doesn't. Are you understanding me? Uh -huh. So i don't think it is really an issue except that naturally people will talk about some issues about it so just be careful about those issues to be like you know there's a similar story in the bible with samson in the case of samson it was not even boyfriend girlfriend samson went to marry a girl and when Samson went to marry a girl the guy who was samson's best friend at the time or what you will call the, samson's best man eh, when Samson now left, I don't know where Samson went. You know, Samson, sometimes he can get crazy and you go somewhere. <laughs> By the time he came back looking for his wife, his best man had married his wife. His best man had married his wife. He said, ah, I've got an opportunity to beat you people. And you know, Samson, when he gets mad, he will beat everybody. So he went on a beating spree. That is when he gathered folks and lighted torches to their tails and released them into their fields and they bent all their fields to the ground yeah. and they asked why has this happened they say it's something who did it why did he do it because his best friend has gone to marry his wife and bible makes us to understand the men of the city they caught his wife and his best friend and his family stoned all of them and killed them for bringing that disgrace on them you understand me uh -huh. so these are issues that can happen but 
all I'm saying is that try and manage the, the public relations around it. But otherwise, there is no hard and fast rule which says that you cannot manage. Everybody you may get married to tomorrow or something. Well, somebody's ex at a point. Oh, me when I married my wife, she was some boy's ex. I know the boy too. <laughs> uh, me and the boy went to school. <laughs> but was my, 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 my wife's ex. So me when I came, I just said, Charlie, my time has come. It is written about me in the volume of the books, thou art my wife. <laughs> and I came to do what I needed to do. So everybody will be somebody's ex at one point or the other, depending on how life goes. So it shouldn't be a big problem. Okay. All right. Can we take just... The last one. The last of question. Time. Mm. Okay. So we'll take the last one. Last two. <laughs> okay. Um, he says, please, I'm married for six years, and now my husband has packed out of the house. He says he can't marry again. Please, what should I do? We have two children, and I love him. He says he can't marry again. Yes. Well, usually men will not just say, I can't marry again. Like I said, you see, I want to assume that people in a relationship, they are rational beings. No, like the way I'm married 16 years now, then I come and say, I won't marry again. No, 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 no. Something triggers all of these kind of things. Yeah. Are you understanding me? Mm -hmm. I, I, okay, of course, I do not discount that sometimes somebody can use sorcery on somebody mm -hmm. that he can decide out of the blue, I won't marry again. So that can happen. So if the issue is an issue of sorcery and divination, that a spell has been cast on the man, says that he has lost his senses when he sees you, he sees you as Kakamo to be, and he doesn't want to continue the marriage again, then you need an Estes fast. <laughs> I say you need what? You need an Estes fast to re rectify this anomaly. Are you understanding me, somebody? That is number one. But apart from that, usually nobody will just get up and say that I don't want to marry again. Usually there are telltale signs that happen all along the line and people continue to ignore it over and over and over and over and over. And because you continue to ignore all of these things, people get to a point that they get fed up and they decide that my lot will be better if I leave and go. Are you understanding me? Of course, I don't want anybody to lose their marriage with two children, six years of marriage investment. I would rather that if the families can meet to discuss it and find out what his concerns are what do what what does he expect from you that you are not doing or what is it that is making him not want to be in the marriage again and look at how best you can rectify those issues so that the marriage can grow look there is one of the things i do with my wife on a regular basis is that i keep asking her the way i'm loving you are you feeling the love Feeling are you understanding me? Yes. Are you feeling the love? Because see, I think I'm loving her, but it doesn't mean that it is working for her. Are you understanding me? And that is the way a lot of Africans we do our marriage. We tell ourselves that so far as I'm doing this and that and that for her, she should be fine. But the one who is on the receiving end of your love, you will have to find out from the person, is it really going well for you? Then they can now give you a correct assessment. So, okay, you are trying, but in these areas or that areas, you can improve yourself. Then you improve it. You understand me? She too, she comes to ask me, Charlie, the way I'm loving you, do you, do you, do you feel the love? And I'll tell her, well, I'm feeling it, but I don't like this or I don't like that. It is an issue of continuous improvement. The Kaizen principle, we always improve on where we are. It can always be better than what it is now. Yeah. Are you understanding me? But if you are not ready to do that accountability and submit yourself to this kind of checks and balances, you will tell yourself, she should be satisfied with what I'm giving to her. And I know that I've been loving her. I've been, I've been buying her. Since I've been buying. She should be satisfied with But for you know, that is not what your, your wife is really looking out for. I mean, the greatest need of a man is respect. Every man want to, wants to be respected and honored. You can do anything else right, but if the respect is not there, no man wants to be in a relationship with you. 
every man wants to feel like a man he wants to feel like i'm the number one he wants to feel like a hero in a relationship if he doesn't get that feeling and somebody makes him feel like a hero outside he will prefer to be going outside than staying inside are you understanding me then another thing that is one of the greatest need of a man is sex if he doesn't feel that his sexual needs are being taken care of well and somebody out there is driving him down the sakumono, sakumono lane he will be going to the sakumono lane amen. amen you must also upgrade your 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 sex life amen. amen upgrade your sex life it cannot always be missionary position amen you know missionary <laughs> but may i send him amen take me as i am it cannot always be like that are you understanding me you to learn you to learn we are in a knowledge economy learn improve it improve it improve it bible says that a man's body is for his wife the woman's body is for the man this whole body is yours explore i said what explore ah explore this this explore the whole body is yours <laughs> according to the bible amen and me to all of this is for you for yeah and she's been exploring very good mm, nice going to the mountains and, <laughs> and and into the valleys amen explore let 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 the marriage bed be exciting let it be exciting you understand me you know i got a message from my wife you know the last time we had an encounter you know encounter you know then she sent me a message after the encounter that charlie the last encounter was very brutal <laughs> Very brutal, you know. Every month you go, yeah, Charlie, that is working. <laughs> you are, you don't want accountability, you don't want grading, you don't want people to tell you that it is not working. If they tell you, no, then you bore. But if the thing is not working for me, I have to let you know it's not working for me. Let's improve it, let's grow, let's move to the next level in the relationship. Amen. 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 So, um, the little I'll add to. It is that my sister, our men always want to have us fresh. So um, learn to keep yourself fresh. Just as he met you the first day, he said, I love you. Maintain that, um, that presence, maintain that, that physique, maintain it as much as possible. And like my husband said, um, in, in Ghana here or in Africa here, women don't really like flowers. But they say that sex is like to men as flowers is like to women. So just as women, we love flowers or chocolate, men to love sex like that. So learn to um, spice up your bed, learn to spice up your room, whatever reason that he left or um, he's gone to another woman, aside prayer, keep yourself fresh and look into the other things um, that relate to the marriage. Pastor Jeff, the last one here, it says that I have a lady I'm dating. She's mm -hmm. in the university level 300. Mm -hmm. And we have agreed to marry when she completes. Mm -hmm. We love ourselves, mm -hmm. but I'm afraid that she but I'm afraid that after she completes school, she might tell me she's not interested. Please advise me. Well, I don't know what gave you that uh, impression that if she finishes, she will tell you she's not interested because i i want to believe that um whether the person is in school or the person is not in school is the same person so my point is that if you have seen signs that have that suggest that the lady is not truly interested in you it's not when they finish school or when they don't finish school if the person doesn't like you the person doesn't like you i think that it is better you have an honest discussion with the girl and know where you stand with her now rather than to be waiting on standby all the way till she finishes school only for her to release the same bombshell to you i say so try your audio no and then if you take it earlier you are safe the slap that is inevitably for you the earlier you encounter it the better for your life so if you think that there are issues that give you the impression that this girl may not be holy into me and that she's just hanging on to me or just using me till she finishes her school address the issue sit down with her make sure that you have you can have a very frank and open talk about it if she's not interested just go your your way that is it but apart from that i don't see how getting a degree can change somebody's mind about marrying you or not marrying you 
It's not about the degree. It's just that maybe she's not into you in the first place. If you have got any reason to believe that, have a discussion. And let that discussion help you to know what to do next. But by all means, don't just hang around. Uh, when you yourself, you know that the girl doesn't love you. And you are just hanging around, hanging around. When she, by all means, when she finishes the school, she will leave you. Mm -hmm. Because already she has given you enough signs for you to know that I am on my way to leave you. Are you understanding me? I remember one day I was driving with my mother. And there was a car in front of us. And they had written behind the car. Uh, they, they had written uh, the, uh, they had written at the front of the car may the sign mm -hmm. then at the side of the car they had written may sign mm -hmm. then at the back of the car they had written my sign mm -hmm. <laughs> which literally means I am coming to overtake you at the front then on the side of the car they are, they are written I am overtaking you then at the back of the car they had written I have overtaken you some of these things before the overtaking comes, you can see the sign which says that I am coming to overtake you. I am coming to leave you. You can see the sign. And when you see the sign, advise yourself. You see that you have a, a very candid discussion with the person and you come to a certain conclusion that works for both of you. But by all means, don't keep staying in a relationship where the person has made it abundantly clear that I am not really into you. Amen. Amen. At the end of the day, you may say that the person disappointed you, but I think that they gave you enough cues for you to know that this thing is not going to work. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the privilege of being with us at lunchtime prayer today and for sticking and staying with us, especially for this Q&A session. It's been great having all of you. I want to say a very big thank you to my one and only wife, Juliana. Amen. Today she has come on set with me. Amen. Amen. And I hope that this will be the beginning of many more times Amen. of coming on set. Amen. Amen. Oh, one.